Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I have a Q&A video for you guys today. I asked on Instagram and Twitter and on the community tab on my channel for questions and you guys sent me quite a few questions so I'm gonna go ahead and answer those. I didn't sort them into any order or really think about them beforehand so who knows how this video is gonna go. <laughs> Uh, but let's just jump right into your questions. So the first one is if money and time were no object, what video would you make? Um, I would love to make like a book store tour like video like going around the country or world to different bookstores and just like vlogging the experience or you know just shooting little videos in different bookstores that would be so much fun um obviously that would take a lot of money to travel and a lot of time that i don't have because i work a 40 hour a week job also i am not very good at like staging videos and vlogging in public so there are a lot of factors that make that probably not something that's ever going to happen but I can dream. The next question is what teas do you enjoy as the weather gets colder? Um, I will actually link my winter tea favorites um, or most re reached for winter teas video down below um, and then I'll link another one from the year before uh, because I've done a couple of the most reached for winter tea videos. Um, I would say in general it is um, herbal teas because I drink a lot more tea in the evenings in the winter and black teas because I like the full-bodied teas in the morning. Uh, for specific teas, check out the videos down below. So the next question I actually love because I love to talk about my cats, but also because I bet a lot of people are actually wondering this, and I think I may have briefly talked about it in a vlog, but uh, the next question is, why is Einstein an outside cat and Simon is an indoor cat? So there's actually two outdoor cats, um, Einstein and Ringleader, and then there's Simon. So we had Simon first. He is, um, he came from a litter of cats from the next door's neighbor's mama cat. Um, so we got him first. He actually just like showed up on our porch and wouldn't leave. So there were like five cats in that litter, kittens in that litter and he would just come straight for me every time and then when I was out of town he just like showed up on the porch and wouldn't leave and Justin was like I think we have a cat so that's how we ended up with Simon and we brought him indoors and then the next summer so almost a year to the day um, we noticed a litter of kittens in our backyard and I thought that they belonged to the neighbor but then the neighbor was like, no, our mama cat hasn't had kittens and those aren't ours. So um, we were noticing that they were kind of just hanging around, but there was no mama cat. And um, so we ended up kind of slowly luring them up onto the porch to like feed them. And um, there were four cats in that litter originally. So one of them, which we named Tiger, she or he, we don't know if it was a boy or a girl, um, died within a few weeks. It was really hot, but we think she was sick to begin with. Um, so she died pretty soon after we encountered them. Um, and then the other three, we fed for probably about six to nine months. Um, the third one was Runty. And so when they got old enough, we tried tried to catch all three of them on the same morning to take them to get them fixed and we failed <laughs> we got one of them the first night so we got our first morning we got ringleader the first time so we took ringleader got him fixed about two months later we were able to catch einstein and we got him fixed and then runty just after that just never came back so he was like get out of town you guys are not gonna get catch me so he's out sowing his wild oats, doing whatever. But the other two uh, we were able to fix. And so the litter is like semi-feral. So we have been caring for them now for two, maybe two and a half years. Um, and ring litter wants nothing to do with coming inside the house. Like when you open the door, he'll back up to the edge of the deck and then he'll come up when he realizes you're going to feed him but he wants nothing to do with coming inside. We started bringing Einstein inside when he started sort of 
wanting to and we've taken Einstein to the vet for like shots and stuff because he'll let us pick him up and carry him around um however when we bring him inside he hangs really close to the door and Simon is a jerk so Simon like short answer to this question is that Simon's a jerk but long answer being Einstein doesn't really want to be inside when he's inside and Simon will like mount him and bite his neck and he's like trying to show dominance but then Einstein will start crying so they aren't really good together and I think if given enough time they would get used to each other but at this point we don't want to push it because obviously Einstein's not super interested now you can open the door and he'll come right in but he wants to go back out after you pay attention to him so that's really the long answer is that Einstein and Ringleader are were semi-feral cats, or they were feral cats, and then we sort of started feeding them. And so now they are, you know, they'll let us pet them and touch them and feed them and all that, um, and they come to eat on a regular schedule. Um, but they aren't, like, they don't really want to be inside, and we also don't have the space to have three cats inside, because if I bring Einstein in, I can't leave Ringleader out there by himself. They're brothers. That's just cruel. Um, we are looking at getting a um, bigger house down the road and maybe once we do that we will be able to bring them in um, because transplanting them out of their habitat is going to be really stressful on them and I almost feel like at that point we should just bring them in instead of trying to have them adapt to an environment that is not their their environment so or not their territory so yeah um, Simon spoiled and a jerk. Einstein doesn't really want to be outside. I mean, inside also doesn't like Simon. <laughs> so the next question is, what, who is your favorite Disney character and why? So my all-time favorite Disney character is Yzma from Emperor's New Groove. I love her. She's ridiculous. She's the world's worst villain. She's awful, but she says the funniest things and does the funniest things, so I just absolutely love her. Um, I actually hilariously knew who she was from the TV show. Um, Emperor's New School. I used to watch it late nights in college and then about two years ago I finally saw Emperor's New Groove and I was like this is so funny and Justin thought it was hilarious that I had never actually seen the movie that the TV show was a spinoff of. I just I just hadn't I don't know um, but she she's hilarious so um, anytime I find Yzma merchandise um, I snap it up so I have like two Yzma head like, Mickey ear headbands um, and then there's somebody on maybe DeviantArt or Tumblr that does um, Princess Yzma and that's what I'm hoping I get for Christmas because I love them if you haven't seen them look up Princess Yzma I'll link um, the the website down below hilarious basically they put Yzma into different um, princess roles and it just highlights everything I love about Yzma. Like the Titanic one is so funny. Ah, uh, so funny. Okay, yeah, you have to check it out below. It's the best. But yeah, Yzma is the best slash worst Disney ca character ever and I love her. The next question is, what are your favorite Christmas or wintertime books? And I don't actually own or have read a lot of Christmas books. Uh, but I do have one that I absolutely love and I keep meaning to reread during the holiday season and that is The Mischief Under the Mistletoe by Lauren Willig. So this book is adorable. It's part of the Pink Carnation series but I think that you can actually read it outside of the series um, and still uh, you would still be able to understand it but not like actually miss a lot in the arc or anything like that. But basically this is the cutest little like mystery book about this um, girl who has taken like a teaching position at a girl's school in Bath and then she gets like tangled up in this spy plot uh, that involves Christmas puddings and there's a romance and it's set during like the time of Napoleonic France but it's set in Bath. It's so cute and I love it and it's probably one of if not my favorite of the Pink Carnation books and it's just lovely. And then we have another Christmassy question which is your all-time favorite Christmas movie. Um, I watch a lot of Hallmark Christmas movies <laughs> um, so I don't I don't have like a lot of favorites I just 
literally saturate myself with Christmas movies um, when they start playing on the Hallmark Channel. Uh, I think as far as like older movies or classic movies, um, I really love the Claymation Rudolph. That's one of my favorites. And um, the cartoon original Grinch movie, that one I love too. So those two would be like old favorites. I probably should have sorted these into like tea, book, and other, but I didn't. This is another tea one, uh, asking what teas make me feel festive. Um, again, the video down below that's like most reach for winter teas that's you go to for those tea questions but um I, I feel like chais make me feel the most festive because they're very like warm and cinnamony and um that just makes me feel like it's winter and christmas um when they when you know when it starts to first get cold i usually go and get a chai latte at starbucks although lately i when i've gotten them they're just way too sweet because i'm used to what i make at home which has coconut sugar in it and is not super sickly sweet so starting to make chai lattes at home but chai lattes are my festive winter drink and then a question about like my reading history which i have a video from a really long time ago that i'll link down below which i feel like i should maybe elaborate or update this video but it's called my reading story or my reading history uh, so i'll put that down below because that'll elaborate a little bit more but the question is who or what got you into reading uh, and I, I really honestly don't know that I can pinpoint who or what got me into reading because I've always been interested in books and reading. So my mom is a retired elementary school teacher. She taught special education and she actually taught kids to read. So while she herself is not a reader, um, reading was really emphasized for me and my sister when we were younger. It stuck more with me than it did with my sister. But... Um, I can, like, my earliest memories about reading is that um, the book Wacky Wednesday, I was obsessed with it, and so we would read it every Wednesday because otherwise I would want to read it every night, so my mom was like, no, we can only read it on Wednesday because it's called Wacky Wednesday, and we would read it every Wednesday, and my mom was like, it would take half an hour to read this book, so um, that's, like, my earliest memory and kind of, I think, part of what got me into reading. The next question is what is your favorite season and that is hands down fall it's just cold enough to feel cozy but you're not like frigid when you go outside so i really love fall i love the fall colors it's just my favorite and then somebody asked what is something that i want for christmas um mostly this year i asked for books and then i also kind of asked for more polish pottery because I'm obsessed with Polish pottery. <laughs> um, I'm thinking about actually doing a Polish pottery collection video, but I don't really know if anyone would be interested in that. It might just be me. So yeah, nothing really huge and exciting on my Christmas list this year. Oh, uh, except for Princess Yzma. That is something that I, <laughs> it's one of those things where I told my husband like the magic car pat last year, don't ruin Christmas. Go ahead and order Princess Yzma because I want Princess Yzma. The next question is, do you prefer Disneyland or Disney World? So I've actually only been to Disneyland once. We're going again in February. Um, it'll be my dad's first time ever at Disneyland, which I'm stoked just to see his reactions. Um, but my family has gone to Disney World a ton. Uh, my dad's actually a Disney Vacation Club member, so we go um, fairly regularly. And I would have to say Disney World is my favorite. There's more to do there and um it's there's more space so you don't feel crunched up against people and honestly i just feel like the people who work at disney world have more of that like classic disney spirit um i know that disneyland because of where it's situated has had a hard time really hiring to the level that they used to and so when we were in disneyland it was i was shocked at how rude some of the employees were so i would say that disneyland I like the um, the history of it, but I a hundred times over would prefer to go to Disney World. Next question is, what is your favorite Christmas cookie? Um, I don't know that I have a favorite Christmas cookie so much. I like to make Christmas cookies, like tons of Christmas cookies. It's one of my favorite things to do at the holiday. But my favorite, favorite thing to do is to make marshmallows. So that's really my favorite. I love to make homemade, just regular vanilla marshmallows dipped in dark chocolate, sprinkled with peppermints, like crushed up candy canes or peppermints. That's my favorite like Christmas treat. The next question is what is on your bucket list for the next five years? Um, 
that's a lot to think about. Um, I mean, one thing that my husband and I bucket list want to do in the next five years is to take a train trip from Chicago to Oregon. Um, so that's something I really want to do. I also would really like to go to all of the Disney parks around the world. That's probably not going to happen. Buying a new house, like a bigger house where we have more space to spread out and um, kind of feel not so cramped because our house was, it was always meant to be my first house, but we ended up both living here and it is, we have too much stuff because we are hobby people. So that, um, maybe have a kid like that's on the horizon and probably should be done in the next five years if we're going to have children but also like right now I like kids in theory not so much in practice so yeah so the next question is your favorite place to read um I love to read curled up on my couch right now especially next to my Christmas tree with the cat next to me. That's my favorite thing is like when I get to curl up and read and the cat's like next to me and I can hear him purring with his like little warm cat body next to me. Love that. Also love reading in our bed and uh, in the bathtub. So those are my favorite reading spots. Um, most of them, actually all of them, are inside of my house. Being the allergy kid, I don't really like to read outside. It's nice when I can lay in my hammock and read, but usually I either get too hot too cold or I end up having to take a shower when I come in because I'm sneezing from all the pollen. I thought I might get this question which is what do you do for your job? So I'm not going to elaborate a huge amount on that just because our company does have a social media policy where we're not really supposed to to talk about the company and that kind of thing online without like being sanctioned to do so which I think is pretty standard for bigger companies uh, but I do work in the insurance industry so um, what I do within that is essentially work with technology partners to onboard new em like employee policies. So that's really vague and probably makes no sense to you, but I work in a tech related part of the industry, uh, insurance industry. So the next question is what uh, bookstore would you like to visit that you haven't yet? And I really, really want to go to bookstores in Europe. Um, definitely I want to go to Persephone books because I love the concept behind it and I love the physical object and it just is somewhere that I would really like to go and pick out some books um, and then just really explore the different bookstores in England especially but just throughout Europe like I didn't take enough advantage of that when I was in Germany looking in different bookstores like I could kick myself at this point for not having bought a German edition of Harry Potter because I was there I was in German bookstores and I didn't buy it so I don't know I really would like to go to every bookstore there is honestly I know that's completely irrationally not going to happen but I would love to just go to bookstores I like to look anytime I'm going to travel um, and pick out a bookstore and stop in there whenever we're in a new city so yes the next question is, what is your favorite book? Um, so I have two that I consider like the, well, three that I consider the top of the top favorite books. First one is uh, Bel Canto by Ann Patchett. Love it, reread it, it stands up to a reread. It's so good. If you haven't read it, it's fantastic. Um, it's basically about a hostage situation in a South American country. And it's this like beautiful character study about um, just people and the relationships of people and the language barriers and music and it's gorgeous. Um, the next one is um, Ready OK by Adam Cadre. That one also stood up to a reread. I would suggest the um, revised Kindle edition, I mean revised second edition which is only available on ebook sadly. I want them to publish it um, in a physical form. That book is um, like a coming of age sort of well, I don't know if it's a coming of age, but basically it's about um, a teenager and kind of dealing with teenage things, but then there's this huge tragic event that you know at the beginning of the book is not going to end well, and it's just so well written, and I just have such an attachment to it. I read it so many times when I was in high school, and then I reread it about two years ago, and still loved every minute of it. Again, a really beautiful character study. Like, the characters in that book are so just 
well-rounded and and just full of life and I love it. And then the third one is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas, which is like your classic revenge story and I love it. That one I have not reread because it is a huge book, but I intend to reread it maybe next year because it's just so good. And the last question is what is the best favorite tea that you have ever had? And uh, that goes to either Whispering Pines Golden Orchid, which is a black tea with the vanilla in it that is divine, or one that I can't get anymore, which is uh, pistachio ice cream from Batiki. That was a gorgeous green tea with pistachios and like cream or something. And it was so, so good, but Batiki doesn't make teas anymore. So sad day on that one. Um, but yeah, those are my top two all time favorite teas. So that is it for the Q&A. Thank you guys so much for um, asking questions. I will probably do another one of these next year, kind of like not during Christmas time. Um, but I really enjoyed answering your questions. And if you have any other questions, uh, leave them down below. I'd love to answer, uh, just chat in the comments. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. <music>